The underdog, Robert <coughs> Rees. We are back once again. Robert, who is the underdog today? Well, today we are going to have a look at uh, a game from the Reykjavik Open tournament. Oh, that's which, quickly. Uh, <laughs> Which, which just started and yeah. uh, it's a tournament I'm always following. I've played it myself a couple of times. And as you know, with these big opens, the first round, always interesting pairings with uh, Grandmasters taking up challenge of uh, of amateur players. Yeah. And I would like to have a look at the game between a very strong Polish Grandmaster, uh, Gregor uh, Gajewski, well-known uh, player who is mainly uh, known for being the second of uh, Fischi Anand. Oof. And in the first round, he played against a 2200 player, a 20-year-old uh, guy, Andre Nielsen, from Norway. Oh, right. Norway. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> yeah, it's you, you feel the, the upset already coming. <laughs> but it's uh, it's it's funny that uh, I remember that I played also in uh, years ago against uh, some Norwegian players in the first round of a tournament. And then you always associate it with uh, maybe it's the new Magnus Carlsen. <laughs> well, that's that's not always the case. It can only be one Magnus. But um, it's interesting to see because uh, Andre Nielsen is a respected 2200 player, so it's not a putzer at all. Sure. And he uh, he's playing against the grandmaster, so let's see what happens in uh, in the game, right? Yeah, but I mean, yeah, that is, uh, I mean, roughly 386 points difference is uh, quite something, especially if this is a grandmaster of all caliber of almost 2600. So wow, okay, exactly. Yeah, but curious. okay, there's always the pressure of the first rounds. Yeah. These grandmasters, they also they only come to the to the game with the intention that uh, well, only only a win is satisfying. So that also offers uh, new chances for uh, for the opponent. True. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. So, so here shall we go. We have a look? Okay. So it starts with uh, Gajewski's playing with the white pieces. Starts with one d4, d5, c4, e6, knight c3, and here uh, black goes for a sharp line, uh, playing the move c5, Ooh. which is the starting position of the Tarash defense. Very popular line. And as you can see by these moves, that uh, Black is aiming for a fight in the center. And normally that leads to, uh, well, to, to a sharp open uh, game. But since there's a lot of theory uh, in the main lines after uh, C takes D5, uh, it's understandable that um, as, a, as a grandmaster, as the favorite of this game, you're not really uh, willing to spend a lot of um, uh, energy on, on wasting um, uh, moves in a theoretical battle. Mm -hmm. So instead, white goes for the move e3, which is a more solid option with uh, ideas of uh, recapturing with the pawn on, on d4. A lot of uh, tension in the in the center still, so we can still get different type of pawn formations. Mm -hmm. Black goes knight f6, knight f3, and now black decides to uh, to take on c4, d takes c4, okay. uh, which is a understandable move. Uh, leading more to positions which are similar from, let's say, the Queen's Gambit accepted. Everything is it's pretty pretty standard, but uh, it, it can go in many different uh, directions still. And I think from a uh, practical choice of, uh, if you look at it, I think it's quite a clever choice from from White to avoid a theoretical battle. But that's no guarantee that, uh, for for success, though. Um, gotcha. Yes. Black goes a six. And now uh, the idea is to, to go uh, b5 very soon in order to uh, chase the bishop away and put a bishop on b7. And white uh, deviates here with the move bishop d3. It's a kind of a sideline, but has been played by, uh, by strong players before. Black goes knight c6. Castle kingside cd4, ed4. So we have a position with an uh, isolated pawn on uh, d4, and it's very important to realize that black cannot take the pawn here yet because of knight takes, queen takes, and then there's bishop b5 check, and, and whatever black does, the queen will be uh, taken on the next move. So the pawn cannot be taken, and instead black decides to, uh, to play bishop e7, calm play, white goes a3 to uh, prevent any sort of knight before ideas by, uh, by black. Castle king side, and here funny uh, coincidence as uh, Gajewski had reached this position in an earlier game with the black pieces uh, uh -huh. himself, and uh, in that game uh, he played against uh, another strong Polish player, uh, uh, Radoslav Wojtasek. They oh, followed bishop c2 with the idea of forming a battery with uh, queen and bishop on the um, 
B1 H7 diagonal. Mm -hmm. It's a typical idea, and we will actually get to see that in the game as well, but oh. only in a slightly different uh, version. White goes instead rook e1, and now black plays b6. And this may come as a surprise, as I believe a lot of people would think, why not push the pawn two squares? Good question. <laughs> I, I also don't have the exact answer, but it could oh. be that in the long run, these pawns are a bit more vulnerable. White has additional options of challenging the pawns on the queen side with, uh, with a4. So... It's, it's a different way of playing. B6 is also a, a possibility with the idea that after bishop g5, the bishop comes to uh, to b7. All right. So all, all pretty normal, typical isolated uh, pawn position. And here, I think the first remarkable moment of the game as um, white uh, plays the move bishop to b1. Ah, so this battery is built up, but even further back. But that exactly, is, yeah. and uh, the, the strange thing is that uh, the rook on a1 is uh, temporarily out of play. <laughs> yes. Maybe so it was I, a mouse I, slip. <laughs> well, it was over the board, so... Uh, <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> I think it was a conscious decision. Uh, um, so I think a lot of people would start with rook c1. Absolutely. But it's interesting to see that bishop b1 is another uh, possibility. And it's it's not such a big deal because the bishop can also come to uh, to a2 eventually. Mm -hmm. Gotcha, yeah, yeah. But yeah, it still could have done the same on c2 yeah. maybe yeah but it's very yeah that is that is a really strange moment i probably would feel a bit like uh, weird if i would have this uh on the board playing as black i would think like why right. did that happen <laughs> yeah uh, i frankly i'd never seen this idea before mm -hmm. until i was uh, checking some uh, recently played games and it turns out to be uh, quite a common uh, theme oh yes okay. any, any, anyway let's let's see what happens sure because uh, we get a lot of uh, nice tactical ideas later on let goes knight d5 typical strategy when playing against the isolated pawn you're you, you're really trying to to exchange pieces white captures on d5 bishop takes g5 was played whoa and now look knight takes b6 Wow, queen cannot take otherwise the the bishop well, falls and there's a lot of attack on well you're you're you're, you're just winning a pawn here yeah after queen takes b6 which was actually played in the game there is Whoa. knight takes g5 oh yeah but that is yeah oh but queen can take no queen cannot take on b2 that's too well, dangerous look, if you take the pawn on b2 there is bishop takes h7 King h8, and then, and the then queen follows up, and that's game. The over. game is over very soon, yeah. as the bishop will move away with with checkmate to follow. All right, right. So instead, black got to deal with the threat of uh, the pawn hanging on uh, h7, and plays the move g6, which is a good move. And despite being a pawn down, black has uh, very good uh, chances of regaining the pawn, as both the pawn on uh, b2 and the pawn on d4 they are both under threat by the queen and knight. Mm -hmm. Why decides to play here to move d5, trying to get rid of the, the pawn weakness, um, attacking That's the knight. actually quite nice, but then the, the rook probably goes to the d-file, I guess, now? Uh, well, that's that's interesting. Rook, rook d8 is, is a possibility in, indeed. And I think White's idea was to, to go uh, forward here with, uh, with queen g4. Ah, uh, that's good, yeah. And the, the big difference is that if you... Um, well, now white is That's looking for dangerous. ideas with queen h4. Yeah. And if you, instead of playing d5, if you would have started with, uh, let's say, queen g4, there is queen takes d4, taking the pawn and offering the exchange of queens. Mm -hmm. So that's the, the idea behind the move uh, d5. Yeah, okay. But instead of rook 88, which is actually an interesting uh, suggestion, Arne, was not, uh, was not played... Um, ED5 was on the board, and now White's idea was to activate the, the bishop uh, <laughs> to the diagonal we were expecting it would go at some point. So funny. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a very remarkable play, and uh, I don't think that White is uh, better here, but it's it's still a position with, with full of play, a lot of uh, ideas um, mm -hmm. in, in an open position. Rook 88 played. White plays very ambitiously now with, uh, with a move B4, uh, defending the pawn. Should be said that something like queen d2, uh, protecting the pawn and connecting the rooks is perhaps um, a more solid way of uh, approaching this uh, this position. Mm -hmm. But white uh, reveals its intentions that it, it would like to use the uh, queenside uh, majority, um, two versus one, 
could be an asset in the, in the long run. Uh, one idea of having the bishop on a2 is also shown in the following line as black, very understandably, don't forget black is uh, more than uh, 380 points lower rated, uh, <laughs> would not mind making a draw here. Sure, uh, as, yes. As black. So uh, black is aiming for simplifications with the move a5. Mm -hmm. Now things are heating up again. And you can imagine if, let's say, all these pawns on the on the queen side, if they are going to uh, to get exchanged, it will be uh, pretty drawish. So, white is not interested in uh, trading on uh, on a5, and instead plays the move b5. Oh, ah, okay. With the idea that after queen takes, there is rook b1. Rook b1 yeah. So the b file is open. That's why the bishop is better placed on on a2 <laughs> in this case. And now, if the queen a6, there is bishop takes d5. Yeah, and that's what I was looking uh, at. There, there is a lot of pressure all of a sudden uh, on this diagonal against the pawn on f7. Yeah. Who knows, maybe the queen will come to b3 or to, to f3. But white uh, is having the initiative in uh, in this case. So black didn't uh, didn't uh, fancy capturing the pawn, played knight d4. Oof. But now white gets uh, protected past the pawn on the b file which is uh, great news in the long run if pieces are getting exchanged. But before the uh, end game, there is still a very sharp middle game, which uh, white needs to work its way through. Uh -huh. Queen f6, attacking okay. the, the knight. And um, white played queen d2. Oh, okay. What, what is against uh, g4, queen g4? Is it too much or is it also playable? well the, the the thing is the the knight mm. on uh, on d4 is there so i think there's a knight fork <laughs> on, on c2 Good yeah morning. okay yeah that that <laughs> will probably yeah there's no counterplay there i mean uh, easily with I, h5 I everything it, yeah. will be stopped okay right that's uh, so good th that's why out. queen d2 so the queen also wants to keep control over the over the knight on uh, on d4 huh. and black goes h6 attacking the knight but the knight is in trouble uh, knight doesn't have that many convenient squares to go to. Yeah. So before moving it, white plays here to move rook 81. So black can take the knight on g5, but then white will take the knight on d4. Okay. And white will retain control in the center. Its pieces are more actively placed there. But now things are, are, are getting uh, quite, uh, quite sharp because you would think black is going to do something about that knight on d4. But instead, rook f8 on the board which is a, a great idea, as there's no chance for uh, white capturing the knight on d4, as True. it runs into queen takes, rook takes e8, counter check, take on e8, and now the queen cannot be taken because of the, the back rank mate. So I, I like this very sharp intermezzo, where uh, both sides are uh, delivering some, some punches. And after rook f8, you, you see that white is struggling with its uh, back rank uh, control. Mm -hmm. So white played here to move knight h3. And uh, well, it's, it's maybe hard to believe, but just in, a, in about seven moves from now, the game is over. And there are actually multiple mistakes being played here, but that makes the game so fascinating to, uh, to discuss with you, Arne. Nice. Um, in the game, there followed the move uh, queen h4, which is understandable, uh, but probably not the best. Uh, probably... Black didn't like the idea that the pawn on h6 is uh, threatened to be taken now. And, uh, of course, a move like king g7 uh, is, is yeah. a possibility, but That's it's, it's a I little thought. soft. Mm -hmm. And uh, instead, uh, a sharper move here is the move rook to e4. Oh, Would okay. have been quite a, quite a nice oh, idea. Oh, that is super cute, yeah. And the yeah. idea, it's, it's, it's very difficult to see, and I only uh, noticed it with the help of the engines, of course. Um, the idea is that if you do take on e4, there is d takes e4, and the rook on d8 will support the knight on d4 with possible uh, discovered exactly, attacks, yeah. checks on uh, on f3. While if you would take the pawn on uh, h6, there is beautiful resource rook g4. Oh. Yeah, I'm looking at the square or the G file the whole time, even for the queen, because of course the bishop on B7 is looking into the direction to uh, of G2. Exactly, you know? exactly, and maybe not only the the bishop, maybe the the queen or even the knight can come to F3 as well, uh, with sure. uh, the uh, with the idea that the pawn on G2 is uh, is pinned. So there are, there are a lot of tactics, and um, well, it's difficult hmm. to say, but probably this is a quite uh, quite promising for Black. 
But let's see what, what happens in the game. Queen h4 um, does allow uh, the knight coming back into the game with knight f4, which is, of course, not a possibility had the rook already been on, on e4. Then the, the square would have been covered uh, by both the queen oh. and the rook. Yeah. But black played here rook e4 anyway. <laughs> and... Um, yeah, now things are, are, are really uh, getting sharp. Yeah. And uh, Knight Board is, is on uh, flames. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the board, board is on, on fire here. And, uh, um, well, the Knight knight is in trouble. For instance, um, if you uh, if you play a move like G3 to yeah. uh, attack the Queen, uh, there's this hole on uh, on F3. So the Knight can uh, can jump in with a, with a family check winning material. Yeah, is it winning material? Yes, it yeah, is. Well, yes, the, yes, the, yes, the thing yes. is actually that after King G2, you can, before capturing something, you can even move the queen. Exactly. Just yeah. to keep it uh, keep it simple, as now both the queen and the rook are, are still hanging. That's nice. But okay, what, what to do with this knight? Yeah, the knight doesn't have that many squares. The, the Black is threatening to take the knight, right? So yeah. if, if the knight would go to D3, there is uh, something like Queen G4, which is incredibly strong with um, tactical ideas like Knight yes. F3 uh, coming up uh, very soon. And uh, well, maybe maybe there's still a defense, but it's 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 very very unpleasant uh, for for White. The best move, which was not played in the game, it's the move Rook takes E4. But this also looks incredibly dangerous oh. as it does open the D file. Knight F3 is a huge uh, threat. But you can go to king h1 queen. with the king, huh? Um, if you go king h1, uh, it's interesting move. Then probably the best idea here is black would still like to play knight f3, hitting the queen and threatening mate on h2. But the problem is that there is queen takes d8 with check. And attacking the queen, the black one. And forcing the exchange <laughs> of queens. It's game over. Yeah. But the tricky move here is to move the rook away from d8. And um, uh -huh. now the rook is no longer hanging. It's unprotected, but it's no longer hanging with, with check. A check. Oh, this is super crazy. Wow. <laughs> so, so knight f3 is, is a still a huge threat. And you know, it's, it's, it's a sharp game. Probably white can hold on. But the funny thing is, if we take it one move back, instead of um, the move king h1, the key move here for white is knight d5. <laughs> Oh, good. So, so closing the D file with the point that if you do take, there is queen takes D4. Mm -hmm. And now, uh, oops, that's a wrong arrow, but you can uh, just uh, take the bishop on D5 next. If black moves the bishop, then you take the, the rook on um, on D8. Ooh. That is Welcome. sneaky. What a move. <laughs> it's, it's, it's incredible. Knight D5 would have been almost a decisive uh, move winning for white. But this is... Uh, of... That requires a lot of calculation, I guess, to see this. It's incredibly hard. Yeah. And I, I'm not aware of the time situation during the game. Sure. Um, but let's have a look what happened now. Mm -hmm. Because White instead thought it's possible to take on g6 with a knight. Yeah, it's, that's what I saw too, yeah. It's, a, it's another tactical idea. But well, the idea is that if you do take, there's rook takes e4. And now the d-pawn is pinned. So that pawn cannot capture, so the rook on d8 will not support a knight on d4. And if you do take with a queen, well, there's queen takes d4, and white is a, is a nice pawn up. Yeah. But I think that after knight takes g6, the following move was just overlooked by, uh, by white. As we are not playing checkers, the knight <laughs> doesn't have to be taken. Queen g4, removing the queen, threatening the knight, and... Setting up an additional threat of knight f3 oh, once again. Oh, come on. This is so... What a game you have found. <laughs> this is insane. Well, they created it. I, I just have to look <laughs> at it. <laughs> it's it's, it's, an, uh, it's uh, incredible how many tactical ideas are displayed yes. in, in this game. So why decided to move the king uh, to avoid knight f3 check? But then, okay, queen takes g6, pieces in the pocket, and you believe the game is, is just over. <laughs> but... Wait a second. Bishop oh my B1. Goodness. Setting up the spin. There's rook takes E1 with check. Queen takes E1. Queen is hanging. Knight is hanging as well. Queen F6. And now queen takes A5. <laughs> oh my god. It feels like this should just be winning. Uh, and the, But it's yeah. really amazing what's going to happen in the, in the next two moves. 
because the best move here for black would be just to drop back with the knight to e6 to make sure everything is protected there are no tactical ideas um should be relatively a simple win for black but black decided to play here to move rook e8 okay wait a second so what is going on here rook let's see if e8. the viewers can can find it. yes please viewers also you can see of course the game uh, on the chess based news site the link is under the youtube video as always so what is going on here the rook goes to e8 what is the what is the actual idea i have to find as well what is well, the, I can, I, I can get show out you of what, the yeah yeah show me please I, I will show you what happened in the game that's also remarkable white played here to move queen a7 yeah that's attacking both the bishop and the knight on d4 but this turned out to be a huge blunder because what is the decisive move here for black after which white resigned what wait a second what could be the what could be the move I can. So two pieces are hanging, yeah, yeah. and the the problem is that probably people are too focused on doing something with these one of these two pieces. Yeah. But my recommendation is to look at the opponent's king, and see if you are able to set up an even stronger threat. Very typical for the battle of the initiative, just to look for your own chances. Keep in mind that Black has just played the move rook e8, which had a clear idea. All oh, right. Yeah, I get it. I think it is queen e5, right? Queen e5 was played in the game and white resigned because oh my gosh if you do take the bishop it's queen e2 king g1 and you take the rook with checkmate and that of is course, there uh, we go that explains that is the idea of black oh yeah exactly and uh you can take the knight but that leads to the the same problem yeah, yeah. you don't take the rook but you play queen e1 <laughs> oh straight my away goodness. With, with checkmate and there's not not much you can can do against it it's uh it's pretty much uh How game over brutal now. Right. How brutal. Even, even ideas to take on h2 or uh, take on, um, on yeah exactly uh, bishop d bishop d3 is not working because of uh, queen going to h2 and this that's game over as well that's also game over indeed wow. so let's let's go back one move because queen a7 was a big blunder but the move rook e8 by black was also a serious mistake <laughs> instead of queen a7 the de the defensive idea here for white would have been to put a queen on c3 it's much closer to the to the to the king okay and the knight is pinned the knight cannot move away because then the queen is hanging if you play the same now queen e5 yeah then you can uh, for instance play something like rook e1 and uh, after let's say you go for the exchange of pieces this end game is not that simple at all because it's uh, two pawns uh, versus a piece, and um, White probably has reasonable drawing chances here uh, here still, because uh, the bishop can come to d3, maybe a5, a6 is, is coming. It, it's not that simple to stop uh, White's uh, pawns, and um, yeah, um, still, I, I, I understand queen c3 was not, uh, not played, but queen a7 is clear uh, sign that White overestimated its, uh, its, um, its own chances here. Yeah, oh, Wow! Wow! But what I like what I like about this game is that um, Black also dared to to play, played very actively, mm -hmm. and um, well, got uh, also ideas to to play for the initiative himself. You shouldn't be afraid of uh, of higher rated opponents. So I thought it was uh, it was a nice sharp battle where Black has the the, the luxury, let's say, that a draw is okay, uh, and you know that your opponent, uh, the Grandmaster, is going to push. Uh, but you still you have to to punish the the mistake, which was uh, nicely uh, done by by Black in this game. Absolutely beautiful. Thank you so much, Robert. This was very entertaining. I have to say, nice, nice find, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for watching. We see each other soon for another episode of the Underdog next month, latest. Bye bye. All right, see you. Bye bye.